covering Spark Summit 2017. Brought to you by Databricks. This is theCUBE and we're having a great time at Spark Summit 2017. One of our last guests of the day here is Shafak Abdullah, who's the Director of Data Infrastructure at The Honest Company. Shafak, welcome to the show. Thank you. Now, I heard about The Honest Company because of the celebrity founder, right? Jessica Alba? That's correct, yes. Okay, but how did you end up at the company? Weren't you in a startup before? That's, that's exactly correct. So, yeah. basically, uh, we did a startup called InSnap uh, before we actually get, got into Honest. And the way it happened is that InSnap was more about instantaneous building uh, personas uh, and using machine learning and big data stack. Uh, and Honest at that time was trying to find some, uh, someone who can help them with the data challenges. Mm -hmm. So InSnap was the right uh, piece in terms of like its technology and expertise in big data and machine learning. So we, we basically built uh, real-time instantaneous personas to increase uh, engagement and monetization. And the, it, it was backed up by big data, machine learning, and Spark, and state-of-the-art technology. So we used that uh, to basically help Honest to be, really become data-driven, mm -hmm. uh, to solve their next generation problem of uh, making products which drive value out of data and understand their customers better, operate better business, optimize business better. And that is why they acquired us, and mm -hmm. essentially, we integrated the technology in their stack, not only the technology, but also the culture, the business processes, and the teams which operate those. Okay, we're going to dive into some of the technical details about what you're developing uh, with George in just a second, but I have to ask, the company culture is really important at the Honest Company, right? They're well known for being eco-friendly and uh, socially responsible. Uh, what was it like moving from a startup into that company environment, or was it just a natural? Yeah, so, thing? so basically, uh, of course, Honest was a much bigger uh, startup uh, four or five years after it was initially created. So we at InSnap, uh, you know, very lean, agile, uh, and much more data driven. Uh, that was a bigger, uh, uh, a bigger difference. So the way we solved it, that we actually they allowed us to create a data organization called Data Science, mm -hmm. which was heading all the data initiatives. Mm -hmm. And then we worked with uh, other cross-functional teams with finance, with accounting, with growth, uh, with uh, sales, to basically help them understand what their needs are and how to become uh, really uh, data driven by driving uh, the value out of the uh, data by using the state of the art technology. So it was like a mix of team alignment and cultural change mm -hmm. uh, focused on the business goal and getting act together around it to basically make the change and really enjoyed that while we actually carried out this journey of honest from being just descriptive, which is essentially just finding what has happened in the data, mm -hmm. just generating reports for revenue by be becoming more predictive and prescriptive, which is like more like uh, advanced analytics and also like advanced advisory role which data plays in making decisions around features, around businesses and the operations. Mm -hmm. And George, you've talked to a lot of customers today and some of the same themes. You want to drill down some of the details on what I'm, they're doing? I'm curious about how you chose the first projects, you know, to get quick wins and to establish credibility. Yeah, that's actually a very good question. That's, and basically, we, we were focused around the low-hanging fruit in order to give us a jump start and to build our reputation so that we can actually take much more advanced strategic projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so t and in order to do that, what we did was, for example, if you go to honest.com and you search in their search bar, their search was like very flimsy and it was not revealing good results. So we already built our engine uh, like a matching engine, so it was very easy to extend it into a, like a full search engine. Mm -hmm. So th that was the first deliverable which we thought we could deliver and we delivered in under a month and a half or two months right when we came in. And it was like, hey, this guy is, these guys just improved our search by 10x or 100x, we are getting much more hits, much more coverage uh, of the search terms. And that stepped a stone. Uh, uh, and then it was like, we also wanted to, uh, another piece which we wanted to tackle was, hey, how do we improve uh, honest recommendations? So that was another project. Uh, mm -hmm. But before doing that, Honest did not even have a data warehouse um, which it could call like enterprise data warehouse. 
so that you can get all the data in one place, like a data lake. So, so because the data was siloed in, in organizations, and uh, the analysts could not really uh, get the data into one place and, and basically mix and match and analyze the data. So that, that was another big piece which we did, but we did it very early on. Uh, that was our second big deliverable, uh, even before recommendation, uh, the data warehouse. Uh, so basically we, we plugged in Spark right in the middle, get all the, suck up the data from different interfaces, shove the data in, made this ETL king, which basically extracted, transformed, and loaded the data into the data warehouse. Mm -hmm. Now this data warehouse uh, basically broke away those silos and, combine, and make them like a, a cohesive uh, data lake, which could be used for driving value and understanding patterns, uh, and especially for machine learning, analysts, mm -hmm. and all the decision makers. Was mm -hmm. it a data warehouse or was it a data lake? And, and the reason I ask, for distinction is data warehouse is usually extremely well curated for um, navigation and discoverability, whereas the data lake is, you know, as some people say, a little more than a, a little a step up from a swamp. Yeah, <laughs> so th that's right. So basically, when I call data lake, I actually call it because we have two kind of a, uh, uh, data aggregation or, or data gathering uh, infrastructure. One is backed by Spark and S3, which we call it data lake, where unstructured, structured data, there are all kinds of data there, mix and match. Uh, and it's, it's not that easy, sometimes you need to like, uh, basically like do some transformation on top of the data which is sitting there in order to really under, uh, you know, get to the uh, needle in the haystack. But data warehouse has, like, we, it's like um, in Redshift, which basically gets the data from this data lake or like the Spark ETL engine, and then makes it more like more like a metric driven reports so that it's easily discoverable and it is it is more like what the business requires right now uh, you know as more like formal reports and the dimensions and all those attributes are much more uh, you know well thought of whereas data lake is like kind of a throwing it all in one piece so that at least we have the data in one place and then we can like analyze and and, and process it in in putting all the data first in the data lake and then essentially refining it into the data warehouse. What did you use to keep track of the lineage and you know, to make sure that there was, um, that you knew the sort of truth or, or truthfulness behind all the data in the data warehouse once it got there? Yeah, so, so basically we, we built like data model on top of uh, S3 and Spark. So we use that data model as a basis, as a source of truth to feed in the reports. And that data model was consistent across like wherever you find it. So we want to make sure that those uh, attributes, those dimensions, and anything related to that data model uh, for the e-com and as well as the offline platform is consistent. And uh, so we use like Spark, we use S3 essentially to get that um, uh, data model consistent. And also like we use a bunch of uh, advanced monitoring stuff so that when we are processing jobs, we want to make sure we don't lose the data. Mm -hmm. And we remove the coupling between the systems by decoupling them. Uh, and essentially, in the next version, we made it even stream, event-based streams. Uh, so th that was like journal strategy which we adopted in order to uh, make sure that we have consistency around uh, uh, data lake uh, and data warehouse, data warehouse. What would be the next step? I mean, so now you've, you've significantly enhanced business intelligence, um, and you have the richest repository behind that data warehouse. What would you do either with the data in the data warehouse or the data in the data lake repository? So we are constantly enriching our data lake because that, that needs to be updated all the time. But at the same time, we want to connect business with our metrics and the, the, the insights we derive out of that data which is sitting in data lake to help optimize a problem. For example, we are working on sales optimization, mm -hmm. we are working on operations optimization, demand planning, supply planning, uh, in addition to customer uh, uh, you know, insights. We are also working on um, uh, other uh, strategic uh, project, for example, uh, instead of just recommending or predicting LTV or churn, 
what we are doing is we are trying to be more like descriptive in our analytics in which it takes an advisory role and looks over all the marketing spend, not just predict the high LTV customers, but actually allocates budget for different marketing spends across different channels for omni-commerce. For example, TV, display ads, you know, all of that. So that is also happening uh, as we speak, as we enrich our uh, data lake and essentially like, generate those reports. Now then, we also need to circle back with the business folks or decision makers in order to really convince them to use that. So that's, that's why we create this cross-functional teams yeah. uh, aligned to a business goal, contextually uh, aware uh, uh, teams which, which know their roles and responsibility, but at the same time, which can collaborate, collaborate effectively uh, and uh, produce a result which, which drives the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, what kind of customer insights were you looking for? I mean, yeah. they deliver family products, diapers to the home, that sort of thing. What kind of customer insights were you looking for and, and how's it working? Yeah, so, um, so basically like Honest is, I mean, in order to target customers, we need to better understand what their needs are, right? So customer ins insights, for example, uh, the demographics of the customers. In addition, we also wanted to like see what are the things, what are the patterns which are common in customer so that we can recommend uh, products which are being bought by one segment of customer mm -hmm. uh, versus the other. So th those common properties will be, it, it could be related to like mothers who have, uh, you know, who recently had a children but who live in this neighborhood and have a, this kind of income level. Right. So how do we ensure that we actually uh, uh, predict their demands before it actually happens. Mm -hmm. So uh, we need to understand uh, their habits, we need to understand the context behind it, if they are making some search, if mm -hmm. they, how, how many page views did they did for this kind of a product versus that kind of a product. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, similar to, like, si similarly like other, uh, other things which, which kind of enhance the understanding of the customers, make them into different buckets of seg segments and then using those segments to target, because we already have data about LTV and churn as a predictive models reveal mm -hmm. if, the, if the customer is going to churn for mm -hmm. whatever reason. So we, we know like by doing a similar campaign for other customers, this has successfully uh, you know, given, us, given us more uh, uh, like subscriptions so, mm -hmm. or helped us to reduce the churn. Th that is how we kind of target them uh, and optimize our campaigns, our promotions for that. Sure. We're also looking for the overall lifestyle of the people who are passionate about bonus brand or brands which exhibit similar values. For example, eco-friendly, safe, and trusted products. Right, okay, so we have just a couple of minutes to go before we hit to the break. Uh, this is great stuff. Uh, and George, I'll come back to you for a final question in just a moment. But in 30 seconds or so, uh, tell us, uh, why you selected Databricks? You probably looked at other options, right? Can you Absolute. give us a quick uh, why you made the decision? Ab absolutely. So w when we came in uh, at Honest, uh, all they had was a, a bunch of MySQL developers mm. and very limited big data knowledge. So now they really need a jump start in order to really get to that level with w in very small time. How is that achievable? We don't even have a dedicated DevOps on our team. So, so basically data bricks help to bridge that gap by allowing us to make, get the infrastructure efficiency we needed by spinning up and clusters and, and in hassle-free manner. They also had this notebooks feature where we can scale the code and the sc scale the team by actually reusing the boilerplate code. Mm -hmm. And similarly, different teams have different expertise. For example, data science teams uh, like Python, and data engineers like Scala. So now, uh, those Scala people write functions which can be called by teams in data science in same net notebook, mm -hmm. uh, essentially giving them ab ability to collaborate effectively. Mm -hmm. And then we also needed some tool to give more interaction and visualization uh, for data scientists as well as data engineers. So that help Databricks has a visual visualization uh, built in, mm -hmm. which helps to understand the causation correlation, mm -hmm. at least you know correlation r right off the bat, without even importing the data into R or some other external tool, mm -hmm. and you know making those charts. So there are a bunch of advantages ar around which we wanted, and then it has like a platform API 
or like a DBFS, or like a distributed file system on top of S3, mm -hmm. which are cool APIs, which again provide us the jumpstart which we needed. Uh, in so much, so less amount of time, we, we actually made those, not only data warehouse, but also data-driven products. Right. Yeah, sounds like Databricks, Databricks has delivered. Oh yeah. Awesome, all right George, just enough time for one more question if you want to throw one in. This one is, is kind of uh, technical, but not on the, on the technology side so much as, how do you guys measure attribution between channels and the omni-channel marketing? That's a very good question. We have like this project called multi-touch attribution, and essentially what the, the, the scope of that project is we, we want to give the right weights to the right clicks uh, of the customer as a journey of subscription or uh, conversion. So we, we have like a m model which basically use a bunch of techniques uh, including weighted and uh, linear regression to basically like come up with uh, 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 like a uh, some kind of a weighted uh, way of allowing those weights to be distributed among different channels. Uh, and then we also, the first problem to solve is that we needed to instrument uh, logging so that we get those clicks and searches, all of that, into our uh, data lake. So that was done beforehand, before starting the MTA project. Because we have like a bunch of touch points. A uh, customer could be doing search, he could be calling our sales rep, uh, he could be tracking his order online, uh, or he could be just leaving his card in, in a uh, state in which is not fulfilled. And then, now we're trying to get it offline also model on top of that, mm -hmm. and we're working on to get, so that we know what the customer is doing in store, and we have a seamless experience using this MTA as a next version of it mm -hmm. to uh, give them uh, a seamless experience in store, or uh, you know, in brick and mortar store, or online. Channel. Great, well that's great stuff Shafak. I wish we had more time to go. I will talk to you more after we, we stop rolling. And thank you for being so honest. <laughs> and we appreciate you being on the show. Thank you, I really Thanks appreciate so much. it. Thank you. Shafak, that was great. All right, and to all of you, thank you so much. And we're going to be back in a few moments with the daily wrap up. You don't want to miss that. Thank you for joining us on theCUBE for Spark Summit 2017.